we go. <laughs> we managed to get it in. Um, that, look, people don't like this sort of thing. People don't like you talking about the speculation around the manager, but th- there is probably more than ever concrete speculation that, that uh, Tottenham Hotspur are interested in Ange. And uh, Ange is pressed on it. He's not answering it. Um, he's Well, he's answering it in the same way he's always answered these things. Um, I've got some pretty strong views on the way that I think th- this should be handled by the manager, by the club and all that sort of stuff. I've got some pretty strong views about how I think the job is to go at Celtic. I've got some pretty strong views about how attractive a th- prospect I think Tottenham Hotspur are right now for, for, for any manager at the moment. Um, but I I, I, I I want to hear what you guys have got to say first because I, I'm not convinced at all by... I'm not convinced at all by the 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 prospect of Spurs for Ange right now. I I I heard Neil Lennon speak recently, and he says that there's a job to do still at Celtic, and I and that's how I feel. I, I still feel yeah. there's a job to do at Celtic, um, but yeah, I saw the same thing you're talking mm-hmm. about. Neil Lennon was asked if Ange is going to be in the Premier League in the next twelve months, and Neil Lennon said you know, directly, "No, just no." Um, there's a job still to do at Celtic. However, he was sitting across the table from. Cockney gobshite Tim Sherwood. Yeah. Uh, Tim, Tim Sherwood said yes because uh, I might have heard a wee thing and then the video cuts off and I'm like, oh, for, what? What? A I'll, tell that is. I'll tell you, I'll tell you <laughs> right now, Neil Lennon, who is probably still mates with Der- Dermot Desmond and Peter Law, probably knows more about what's going on at Celtic than Tim. They won't return my calls. <laughs> <laughs> Remember me, I've still got the GLA Sherwood. Yeah. I- I'm not buying into anything that happened in that video, of course, but it was the sources. So this was probably last Friday that it first started um, happening, that Spurs links became quite strong, um, even chat about an official approach about to be made, all that stuff. Now, we sit here on Monday and nothing further has happened, but it was the sources of the of the rumours that started to alarm me. It wasn't just your Fabrizio usual... Fabrizio Morano. Uh, Fabrizio Morano. <laughs> um, Usually on the ball, that guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It wasn't your Kenny Miller and, and Chris Boyd. It wasn't any of that no. stuff. It was Miguel Delaney, guys who are fairly reputable. Well, reputable compared to the, the usual Scottish sort of slurry out there, yes. uh, the, the mainstream media. So I, I searched you know, various social media for just Ange Spurs and all the Spurs, all the sort of blue tick Spurs accounts have all started to click into gear. Here are, here's the breakdown of how Ange plays football. Here's what he could bring to Spurs. Here's how he would benefit this player in the Spurs team. Here's how Richarlison would benefit. And I'm like, oh, I'm not ready for this. I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I do not want to see these breakdowns at all. Well, it might just be speculation, but it feels quite, feels quite uh, ominous at the moment because like Spurs, yes, they are in a, a bit of a mess just now and have been for basically all season. They had a massive meltdown with a previous manager. <laughs> The Not guy, <laughs> the guy who replaced the, the interim, gets sacked mm. after after Conte was sacked. It, it's been a, a disaster. Harry Kane has somehow remarkably scored thirty two goals or something like that this season, still and amongst it all. So they have still got things going for them. But I just don't, this is an opportunity. If there's anything in it that the likes of which I don't think Ange will get again, if this is true at all, people who say no, he should hang on for Liverpool, for, hang on for Man City, Man United. That's never going to happen. They are in the business of the super coaches. Spurs probably are as well, but the, there are links that have come out that Spurs have appointed this Australian director of football who has worked with Ange in the City group before. So there are a few jigsaw pieces fitting together there. It feels like a, an opportunity that he, that might appeal to him. Now, I'm not saying he's going to just ditch sale to get the first opportunity, but on the surface of things, Spurs, only four years off a Champions League final very recently. They were one of the clubs, one of the 16 clubs in the European Super League, which fell through. So they are considered among, I mean, let's face it, it's just wealth, really. Yeah, it's, not, I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing beyond that. But that talks, I'm not talking about personally, I'm not talking about how Ange will be paid more, which he inevitably will. It spurs over Celtic, but it's it's the opportunities that that affords, the greater access to players, facilities, being able to attract different players, being able to work with better players for the last few years of his probably top flight career. It, it, going on 58, Ange Postacoglu, that window is closing because these clubs don't generally appoint managers in their 60s now. It tends to be guys in their kind of early 40s who come through at, at progressive clubs. So for all those reasons, I think it could be an appeal to a guy like Ange because 
I, I won't drag us back down the discussion that we've had before about how England is like, th that's kind of the place to be for not only players, but now coaches. That's where everyone gravitates towards. Whatever you think of it, that's kind of, it's the, it's the main show in football these days. But I don't want any of this to happen. I don't want any of this to happen at all. I would love for Ange to stay for as long as he possibly can. But I'm realistic about it. I know that day will come one day. And it's because he has been been so successful at Celtic that he is unavoidable. He is undeniable for someone one of these clubs. Uh, I, I I don't know at this point. I really don't know. Let me tell you where I'm on everything you've said, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with, with everything you said. But in this specific case, right, Ange has a good job at a massive club. Yeah. Right? Um, but with a ceiling. Yeah. Is yeah my no. Point no. Yet. Yeah. 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 Ange has a good job at a massive club. He's not motivated by money. He's always said that. Regardless of that, <laughs> he's going to. He's a, a very wealthy man, and if he signs any form of new contract at Celtic, he's going to be an extremely wealthy man. His kids and grandkids are going to be taken care of at Celtic. Um, should Ange achieve more? I think there's a job to be done at Celtic. I think there's a uh, Celtic are a, a three stage process here. I think part one is rebuilding us to get us competing back on all domestic fronts and get us back into Europe, and that's where we got tick tick yep. tick. That was last season. This season was about stabilising the club and building on what you've already achieved, getting his back off Foot of Foot on the neck. Foot on the neck. Tick. And the third thing you need to do as Celtic manager, the third thing that we want and the reason we went out and got Ange was to use this nebulous term but to make some form of mark in the Champions League, right? And I know that's not entirely down to Ange, that's down to the club supporting him, right? So if he goes to Celtic next year and goes, if you want me to do this thing that you brought me here to do, I need 50 million quid for you and I don't care where you get it, but there's a billionaire in charge, get him to write a cheque or whatever the case may be, right? So, and just part way through that job, there is work to be done here. He didn't come to Celtic just to sit. Now, I appreciate things change all the time and the Tottenham job has come along. But sometimes things arrive at the wrong time for, for Ange and sometimes that's life and sometimes that isn't to say this is the only time it will come around because I'm not asking Ange to stay for life. What I'm saying is Ange gives one more year because you know just because it's Spurs I think a lot of people are taking what Spurs was or what Spurs could be and not the reality of Spurs at the moment the problem as far as I see it with Spurs is every manager that comes in never gets the backing or the players to fulfil the obligation and the, the vision that he has for Spurs so they end up just I mean it's been going on for years and years and years and years and years these managers come at Spurs they don't get the players they need they end up losing their rag and they just leave and that, that's a risky gamble and just got now you could stay one more year at Celtic and if you achieve what you achieve at Celtic then you might get Brighton you might get Villa you might get West Ham you might get another club maybe not the big name that Spurs is but you get the foot in the door at the Premier League and you get to achieve a legacy at Celtic and you get to build on something at Celtic and you still leave very very wealthy you go to Spurs and you don't get anything you're promised and it goes the way it's gone for every other Spurs manager the last couple of years and you're out before Christmas or you're out before the end of the season you're done that's it. No, he's not going to get the second bite of the cherry. So you need to, he needs to pick his move very, very, very carefully about what happens next. And I don't think Spurs is the club for it. And it's, opportunities come around at the wrong time all the time. All the time. And if Ange was to sit down and write a memoir, it might read, you know, left a Celtic legend, won the treble this year, maybe won the league in the treble and got us out of the Champions League group last year or done whatever next year. Spurs came on for me in the summer but I sat down with Spurs and do you know what it wasn't the right time for me and you, I don't think that would go down as a regret for Ange I don't think he, if he achieves what he can achieve at Celtic and builds a legacy that he can achieve and I know he's not motivated by money but has all the money in the bank that he would get from doing it I don't think he's going to go damn wish I took that 40 million from Spurs for 6 months he might but I don't think that's necessarily where he is and I think that as much as I understand this and appreciate that it's a big draw and I'm not foolish enough to think that people just turn... You know, we're talking probably about the difference between 2 million quid a year at Celtic and 10 million quid a year at yeah, Spurs. Yeah. I know it's massive and it's easy for me to sit here making a fraction of that every week <laughs> um, doing podcasts. Barely make that a month. <laughs> I, hard, I can't make that a month doing Celtic podcasts. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Twitter <laughs> Tim's if you want to help me do it. I, I just don't think that's something that's ever... Uh, ever really motivated Ange and he said it himself and I have to take his word for that now the only criticism I do have of Ange and the only thing that's making me feel wary is he could at any time say I've got a job here to do at Celtic and I want to say, I want to lead Celtic in the Champions League next year and I've started something here that I want to see through and he may very well still say that 
There might be, he might be completely, you know, saying, I'm not going to comment in Spurs till a, a bit of paper arrives in my email inbox with a job offer or until I get to speak to someone. And I know I've been talking for a long time, but I've got a lot to say. He might go to Spurs and say, right, if I'd look at your squad, I need 200 million in the summer to put it right. And if you sell Harry Kane, I need another 100 million to replace him. And the Spurs might just go, we can't do that. And he'll go, cool. And then, then they'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, catch, I'll catch you later on it. Um, but I, I think Spurs, I think, sorry, I think there's no harm if he was staying and could do more to reassure fans like myself by saying there's a job here. And I know people say, and you guys have said it at the podcast before, he could look foolish on that. But we've just sat here and said no super club is going to come in for him. So Spurs are just about the only top club that are really going to come in for him at the moment. I think if he said, I want to leave to get in the Champions League next year, and we're sitting in August in Barcelona, Man U, Liverpool, Man City, come in first, and we can we can all appreciate that some offers are too big to turn down. So I think, I don't think Spurs is the right opportunity for Ange. I think there's masses of work to do at Celtic. I think there's an opportunity to build a legacy and a name that goes beyond what he could do at Spurs. And I think Spurs is a risky bet for him. That is my case for staying at Celtic, Melly. Yeah, and look, this is the most difficult job offer, I think, for Ange, because I think he's still got a job to do at Celtic. He's still... I was at the coaching convention he was talking about Celtic in the Champions League why we want to do that so I've no doubt that Ange was planning and is planning for next season in the Champions League but while he's still got a job to do at Celtic I also think at the exact same time Spurs would be too hard a job to turn down and I get that they're in a bit of a mess but he's not going to get offered that job unless Spurs are in a mess there's no way he's going to get offered Oh, he might. I've got a Ferrari outside with a broken gearbox and four flat tyres <laughs> and a smashed exhaust, but I'll get you it for the price of a Corsa. Well, you don't just take it for it's. It could lead to so many more problems. Yeah, but I think Spurs is kind of like the Chelsea job as well. Is if you don't do well at that, people don't think you're a bad manager. Plenty of managers have went there, not succeeded, and went on to manage. I think Spurs is. Well, it's not a super club. It was one of the clubs. Look what that... it did to Tim Sherwood. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about Neil Lennon. He's talking about Neil Lennon doing Willie Hill podcasts. <laughs> but the Spurs are... Logan Geely is on eBay. <laughs> he probably is as well. <laughs> well, Spurs is, uh, isn't quite the, the top job. It's still one of those clubs that was going to be in that European Super League. So they are seen as a massive club. And is he going to get any of the other big jobs? I, I just don't see it happening. I think I said... I think it was in the Discord recently, I really worry about Spurs because of the way they are right now, I think top managers will knock them back and because uh, Arne Schlott knocked them back last week and sort of moves up and this was my worry that when people have a look and ask Spurs what they're going to do, then they'll not get the reassurances they need but this might be an opportunity for Ange Postigal go, this is me, look, Julian Lopetegui is the Wolves manager, Unai Emery is the Aston Villa manager. This is where you go up against the cream of the crop as managers. The best of the best are in the Premier League. And while it's not about money for him, it is about ambition. He's an ambitious guy. He wants to go up against the best and see where he can go. And I think Tottenham is the best job that he could get offered right now. Whether he takes it, to be honest, I don't think he will. I think a couple of things will come into play. I think Ange will still feel he's got a job to do at Celtic Ball. So I'm just not sure Spurs will come in for him. I think for how much I love Ange and think he's a brilliant manager, I still think they'll be aiming a bit higher than him. I think if they do get him, it will be because they've failed in other targets. Doesn't mean to say he's a bad manager, but I think uh, he's got a job to do here at Celtic. But if Spurs did make concrete uh, a concrete bid for him, I think he'd find it very hard to turn down. Melly makes a good point there and being completely objective about it. You are a the chairman of a Premier League football club and you've got Basically, almost as we you, we we seem to think the pick of European managers, right? Obviously, Spurs don't have the absolute pick because the final manager just turned them down. But how good a job has Ange Postecoglou actually done at Celtic? We love him because of what he's done at Celtic, but a lot of that's emotional. A lot of that's bringing us back from where we were, bringing us where we think we should belong. But how much attention are these chairmen and directors of football actually paying attention to the SPFL, or are they going right? Okay, so he's won the treble. Tick that sort of. That sort of that's like the, to get you into the playoff. Winning yeah. everything in Scotland sort of gets you recognised. In Europe, he did okay. How many of these managers? Do you, how many of these club chairmen do you think are actually thinking that guy's done a really excellent job at Celtic? Well, I'd, I'd actually think it's not the opposite, but it, I don't think it's the, that is the point anymore. I don't yeah. think these clubs look at trophies in Scotland or anything like that because you look at. I, I think like clubs will want to build cultures, winning yeah. cultures, and player development, and you know tactical revolutions and all that other clubs you look at Brighton they went out and 
uh, appointed De Zerbi, who has been one of the managers of the year down there, has qualified them for Europe. He loves them. Yeah, oh yeah, he's one one of the most kind of now influential managers in the league, having come from not nowhere, but I mean f- relative obscurity when it comes to the Premier League. Barely won anything in his career. I think he won a, a cup in Ukraine, possibly something like that with, with Shakhtar. So I don't think they will look at that. They have pulled off a masterstroke there and bringing in a guy who can develop on what Graham Potter had already built and he has absolutely done that I don't think clubs Why did one of the big clubs not go for this guy? Oh, well, it, 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 that, that becomes part of the, the discussion about like opportunity timing right? none of these big clubs are really looking for anyone just now so that's why that's why I'm worried about Spurs because they are looking for managers none of the others are Possibly mm. Liverpool at one point in the future, but they're not going to appoint Ange. And maybe there will be other opportunities in England, such as the aforementioned Aston Villa, Brentford, Brighton, all those kind of things. Those are good clubs to be at in England. Good managers are there. But if they're looking for a manager, it's because one of their managers has gone to Spurs. So Ange could basically just go straight in there. I, again, I'm only speculating and I really hope these things don't happen. Well, we know what happened last thing we did this with yeah, yeah, a Celtic manager. Wow. <laughs> we categorically stated that Rogers was absolutely going nowhere and about eight hours later yeah. he was... Before, we yeah, could, before the podcast was, was even cold, just, he was... <laughs> Gone. Uh, so I, I don't think clubs look at just trophies and stuff like that anymore. I think I think that's too. I, I think that's oversimplifying things. I think they will look at what a manager does within their particular set of circumstances and resources and and all that. How they build a culture at a club rather than what's he won. Spurs are looking for somebody to build a culture and build an identity around Spurs. That what are Spurs? Yeah. I don't know what they are, and they've tried the big managers in Conte and Mourinho, and it didn't get them anywhere. So they need somebody to come in play a brand of football and do something and I think that's why they'll be looking at Ange and when you look at Ange as well it's just Ange you don't have to bring in a whole raft of coaches or anything like that you bring him in and he works like that so I can see why Spurs would go for him and um, when you say look when the chairmen are looking at things and they're looking at trebles and has Ange done a good job I think Ange has done a brilliant job at Celtic is that going to be enough for some of the big clubs no it won't be the problem with Spurs is Daniel Levy's their chairman and that's what worries me as well because that guy will bring in Ange and go do you know what if it doesn't work out in six months I'll just get rid of him well, that, that's something that Ange's got to think about yeah. Yeah. that brings me back to the point I made earlier on like yeah, it's a massive roll of the dice I mean what you're chasing I, I just think it's I, I think it's a huge gamble for Ange yeah, I really do but the big gamble with that is as well is Daniel Levy is the best and worst thing because he could just get an Ange and get, think I'll get rid of him but at the same time he's the thing that'll probably stop and going because he knows this guy doesn't do it he doesn't give a manager assurances he doesn't give them time I could hang out here at Celtic and still be a very good manager for Celtic here's what I want from Ange I want Ange to sign a new two year deal at Celtic on big money uh, on the proviso that if he gets an offer next year we won't stand in his way I don't think that's too much to ask no. uh, I, 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 and I think sometimes some fans I'm not saying you guys are doing this but I think some fans just think the, the Premier League is an irresistible tractor beam and there's nothing you can possibly offer a manager and in fact you know managers don't offer don't really owe Celtic that much anyway and I think we Ange, Ange is a guy with real integrity and I don't think waving some money at him and, and all this sort of stuff is going to drag him down I think if he goes to Spurs it will need to be a very good offer and the, the promise of a very good you know working environment and all that sort of stuff but I, I just think I've gamed it out in my head and I think there's work to be done at Celtic. I think the job's not finished. Yep. And I don't think Ange's sort of guy to walk out halfway through an unfinished job. And I think if Celtic were to make Ange an offer, two-year deal, increase money, we won't stand your way if things go. If another offer comes in next summer, I, I think that's I think that's everyone would be happy. When I say everyone, I mean me, Ange and Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy <laughs> Trinity. <laughs> Trini. And on that bombshell, uh, we will wrap up. Thank you so much to everyone who supports us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash 20 Minute Tims. The football season is over, but the podcasts aren't over. They keep coming. So check us out on Patreon.com slash 20 Minute Tims. We will be at the cup final and we'll see you next week.